people think that we're father and son. Yeah. You got, you look just like your father. <laughs> and then I'll just lip lock him right in front of them. <laughs> Can you imagine marrying someone 37 years older than you? If you're truly in love, does age really matter? I'm Kot Takahashi, and in today's episode of Split Decision, we're focusing on age gap couples. The goal of Split Decision is to have meaningful conversations with the people that matter most. Don't be afraid to tell your partner how you really feel. The first prompt is, my partner is the best I've ever had in bed. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. All right, go ahead and turn around. Wow. <laughs> Look at this. I was about to say. <laughs> Very sexually happy right now. Woo! Okay. Cheryl, you are dancing for joy. Right. Why don't you go ahead and start? I keep her happy. <laughs> Sex is great with him. I was his first, which I didn't know. Wow. Until later on. Was he good on the first time? Yes, and I would have never known. She should have known, because when I first met her, we were in the bathroom, and I forgot oh. what happened. I'm going to tell it. But um, I pre-ejaculated over her legs. Like, you know, I was just, like, rubbing against her, and I just ejaculated all over her. And I was just like, I, she should have known I was a virgin then, but it didn't click. <laughs> so when she actually spent a night, and it was an amazing night, I ain't never done nothing like that. I picked her up, all type of stuff. It was just, <laughs> we were just going with the flow and it just got magical. You know? Okay, wow. Jeff, he's, uh, Trey's the best you've ever been with, huh? Trey's, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that's saying something, because I'm a gay man and in the, you know, that's lived through the 80s, 90s, and the 2000s, mm. so that's a lot of guys. Mm. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. It's a shit ton of guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we met in my dorm room. And I wanted him, you know, the first thing in my mind was sex, and it's more passionate for me. And he mm. was the only person that really brought that energy that I like to bring, whether it's mm. kissing, it's holding, it's just everything. It's, you know, matching. Talia. I have had great other sexual experiences, and I wouldn't have gotten married as young as I did if I hadn't, like, had a life before that. But the connection that we have was unmatched. It doesn't matter if we go through, like, ups and downs. It brings us back together. Beautiful. Brian. Well, John is the best, huh? I'll tell you, we've been together like going on six years and still even when he just like gets out of the shower and like walks by, I'm like, damn. And I'm like, this is so nice to feel this way still, okay. you know, but he's yes. definitely opened me up in more ways than one sexually, <laughs> you know, which is always, always nice. Hi, my name is John and I'm 29 years old. And I'm Brian, I'm 63 and you're gonna make me do math? Yeah. 33 years. 34 if you're looking at Depending it. Depending on when yeah, the birthdays happen. The calendar. The next prompt is, my partner and I have special sexual fantasies and kinks. Make your split decision in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. <laughs> Quran, you say yes. Cheryl says no. What is it? I mean, I say yes, because I do like some kinky stuff. I want to be a slave. I ain't going to flex. I have a fantasy for that. I'm sorry for the people. My people, I'm sorry. I'm just saying that now. <laughs> it's not in the same way, but it's just like, you ever had a like, little mental thing where you're like, oh, master's wife, home alone? I be saying that to her all the time. She's like, shut up, no. Why do you say no? I don't really have a fantasy like that, but if it happens and we're doing it, then hell yeah. John. Well, I think just the age thing plays into my fantasy oh, in that you're like the daddy for me. You are, and sometimes I've called you coach and I played sports my whole life. And actually one of the ways I knew that I was gay was I was really attracted to my soccer coach. <laughs> and so Brian, how's it going coach? <laughs> Trey. Well, very similar to everyone else. I'm the daddy, but we're also into leather. So I'm the sir in our relationship. He's my baby boy and I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your like, favorite thing that you love to do together? Fisting, piss play, some of the other stuff that we've done. Um, public sex clubs. Like, we really clubs. like, it we do like being watched. Like, personally, public, you know, we've done it in parks, we've done it everywhere in airports. Um, piss play. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, it's not what it sounds like. It, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's totally what it sounds like. But how did that happen? You guys like had a conversation, like, hey, are you into the whole pissing thing or a little bit but it like to be truthfully honest it happened inside my dorm those was like like the fifth or sixth time it's we had hooked shocking. up it's a little and shocking. i just stopped and in the middle of it he was like confused why i stopped and i just you know let 
Let the and hose it wasn't loose. because it wasn't because of the the piss that was bothering me. I'm like, but what about the floor? You know, I was <laughs> I was more concerned about who's going to clean the shit up. Uh, my name is Jeff Blaine. I'm 58. My our age gap is 36 years. I'm Trey Hairston. I'm 22. So yeah, 36. 36 years. What you doing? Oh hey, haha. Uh -huh. Just working on this self love project, but something's just off. I mean, look at this heart. Well, you know, there isn't just one way to love yourself. Self-love looks different for everybody, and that heart might be perfect for you. I mean, maybe that's true, but how can I know for sure? You could start by checking out Lilo, and the timing is perfect, because they have some impressive Black Friday deals to help you explore what self-love means for you. Use promo code JUBILEE5 for an additional 5% off your next Lilo purchase, even on discounted items. Wow, I already feel relieved. Thanks so much to Lilo for sponsoring this video. You have my whole heart. This heart. I'm worried my partner might leave me for someone their own age. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. <laughs> Y'all are confident. Love <laughs> it. Okay. Well, have you all ever fantasized about your partner being your own age? Yeah, Unless, all the yeah, time. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, I never see her age, so I just feel like we're the same age until she yeah, gets hurt or anything. Me too. Like, literally, we do everything the same and it's all normal, so I don't see her age until she's hurt or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want him to be different. If he were the exact same person and I could have more time with him, then yes, but That's I don't exactly want him right. to change. Yeah, time. It's yeah. like when he's hitting his stride at 40, mm -hmm. I'll be close to 80 and I'll be decrepit. I'm thinking of, you know, looking at 80 year olds in my in my family, mm -hmm. and I don't want that for you. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to see me that way. I don't want to see myself that way, but I definitely don't want to see you so mm -hmm. young and vital and still this amazing man with whom I'm in love mm -hmm. to see me diminished. Oh and that's just, it's yeah. my fear. Yeah. It's not, mm -hmm. I don't get that at all from you. It's all internal, it's all me. As much as it sounds like a cliche, you know, I think an age gap relationship, like living in the moment, living each day, yeah, we might not be able to plan 40 years from now, because what will I be in 40 years? Like 70? Dust. I wish. Right. <laughs> just, oh, that no. Dust? That's horrible. Hit him. Horrible. Hit him. Horrible. Just, can we just switch? <laughs> can we just switch here? So, but you know what I mean? Like, we really, like, we really, like, doing stuff like this and traveling and just all the fun stuff that we get to do. It's like, we're doing it. It's like, oh, let, let's plan that 10 years from now. We might not have it. I mean, he could get hit by a bus. Doesn't mean like that I'm gonna go first. I think about having a full life with you all the time. And a lot of people have said about kids and I really want to, I want you to be my husband and we want, I want a father with you. I see how you treat your nephews and nieces and it's so special. And the fact that we will miss out on that just, it breaks my heart. Yeah. Mm. That's really bad for us because I can't have no more babies mm -hmm. and he doesn't have any mm -hmm. and of course I want to give him that so like I can't that we talked about that before we even got married like I can't be selfish because we're we talked about it and I can't have no babies but we're we've been looking and trying with surrogates for what a year and a half almost two yeah, years almost two years now wow. so we are working on it and it doesn't matter how old I am because I have seven kids and I can take care of kids no matter what. I take care of my grandbabies. He's a grandpa of 17 um, grandchildren. 18 now, because we just found out one. And they we all call me Pop out. Out and stuff and Pops. I see how she interact with them and they all love it. They love to come to our yes. house. So it's like, I know she's fit. She got years ahead of her. I don't care what nobody say. Age doesn't mean nothing. So we can plan far, but once we have a child, you know, no telling how life is going to bring us and take us because you can't. I don't think of that. You don't want to think ahead too far because mm. yeah. you can't think about tomorrow because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So we just live in the moment, literally. Mm. I'm Cheryl McCain and I'm 63 years old. I'm Karan McCain and I am 26 years old and we have a 37 year age gap. If I caught my partner cheating, I would give them a second chance. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. <laughs> mm. Okay. Go ahead and turn around. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
Uh, Quran, you seem very surprised. I was. She said no, and I said yes, and it's like, damn, okay. I put myself out there. Uh, okay, yeah. I wouldn't take him back because all the other guys' relationships that I was in, they cheated on me. Mm. And I would not think that he would anyways. I, I mean, I know he wouldn't. I, I said from day one, before we even said, okay, we're going to be in a relationship, it's going to be monogamous. Okay. Not to say that if the two of us play with somebody, but it's, it's, never, it's never separate for me. But John, you disagree. Yeah, I mean, we've been together five and a half years, and I know who you are, I know how you feel about me, and if you were to cheat or stray, I know that I'm still the person you want to come home with. I've only ever been in monogamous relationships, and I'm good at it, I like, I like monogamy. And then I met Trey, and he has, he pushed for monogamy, and I was, I stood back from it because I'm like, I don't, think you're, I don't think you're ready for it. You've not experienced enough of life and gay life, and I appreciate the fact that you want to. We talk about everything, and in the beginning it was like, if you, he's 22, mm -hmm. and he's got, he's incredibly virile, has an incredible sex drive, and I am not 22, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, three or four times a day, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I've got, I've got to do. You guys can speak on this. For gay couples, it's a lot extra more work to get ready for sex yep. than it is for straight couples. Yep. Whether it's not eating for a whole day, um, or it's spending an hour in the shower, there's more Animal that we have to do. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I think a lot of straight couples don't know yeah. anything about this. After we have sex, we talk about things. And one of those things that come up is that, is there something like I'm not giving him that he needs? And if he did, sexual change, whatever. Like, I don't care. If you want to go have sex with someone else, if you need that, go do it. I don't care. And but that's, a, that's one of the things that bothers me a little because I want him to care. Uh, sometimes, not all the time. It's like, okay, well, let's see. Let's put that to the test. Let's see what happens. He hasn't done it yet, and neither have I, so. Alejandro, you say yes, but Talia, you're no. How do you feel that Alejandro's on yes, that he would? Well, I knew he'd be there. You knew he'd be yeah, there? Yeah, he's very chill. Like, he doesn't, kind of like what you were saying, like, I kind of want them to care a little bit. Like, he doesn't care. And we've had, before we got married, there were some times where he was open to me exploring some things, so. If in I, I found her that she cheated on me, uh, first of all, it's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. And after that, probably we should, we should talk about it because probably we are uh, failing in, 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 in some point. I'm Talia. I'm 27. I'm Alejandro. I'm 44 years old. And we are 16 years apart. Our age gap affects our political discourse. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, no. Everybody's on no, okay. Trump! <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Really? Obviously. We don't discuss politics. No, we don't. People have different views yep. on different parts of life. So I feel yep. like even with my friends, I don't discuss politics with them because mm -hmm. whatever you like, I may not like, and I'm not going to yep. judge you for whatever you like. So I just, we don't, it's not. Oh, well, I'm the exact opposite. Yeah, same. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> if you don't agree, I think, yeah. I'd rather see you burn. I lived through AIDS. Yeah. I lived through, I buried everybody I ever knew. Mm -hmm. And we all came together from COVID, which is great, but we still can't get a goddamn cure for HIV or AIDS. So right. right. Yeah. We can't get real gun legislation going yeah. for just like normal stuff. Keep it out of the hands of crazy people. After Sandy Hook, exactly. if nothing was done, nothing's yeah. ever gonna f right. right. That's right. They were just so, horrible. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't, I can't. It, it gets me so riled up, anything with, with but age-wise, it is. It's like we've li we've seen a lot. We've, we've lived. Through, we lived through it. We lived through the Gulf friends. War. We've lived right. through AIDS. We've married all of our friends. That's we interesting for me because I feel like you have much stronger polarizing political views. And while I agree with your views, I don't feel as strong about them. And so you're just more politically driven. And I'm seeing Jeff as well. You're you're also driven. And I'm just wondering if us younger guys and and gals are are not as political for because of your lived experience. Right. Has your partner ever said something that okay. triggered you? You know, like, oh, maybe you shouldn't say that. Cheryl's from a different time. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of things that she had to readjust to and learn what to say and what not to say because of the age gap. That's something that has stepped in. That I had to teach her the new lingos of mm. oh, our God. stuff. Cause but she never said anything, like, to you that was like, whoa. Her kids have, but she has never. Yes. She stood up for me one time. And I'm telling you, I tried to ignore the last one. Her son but called it, her on the phone and was like, son, son, something, something about on the couch. 
All I did was turn my music up. I heard my wife immediately, no, you don't say that to him, this, that, whatever. I was so happy. I was going to ignore his ass. I was like, I'm mad like I didn't hear it. But as soon as she did that, I was just like, that just let me know, like, hey, you really do love me because you're cussing out. One of your sons did, she need it, but she don't need them. Mm. So. Are you liking this episode? Do you want to be in one? See what we're casting for at jubileemedia.com slash casting or check the link in the description. Now, let's get back into it. My partner has a vice or bad habit that really worries me. Make your split decision in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. <laughs> okay, Karan, that was a big reaction. Tell me, what's going on? Um, she doesn't really care for her mental health, so she goes in her own comment section, and that really bothers me because I don't read them. I know it's called selfish posting, but you can't hurt me if I don't read it. But she, like, it's, it's different for women because, you know, y'all like affirmation and y'all like to feel like, hey, I'm doing good, I'm doing beautiful, you know, all that. But we get a lot of hate in our conversation and she goes there and I feel like that's something that's damaging her more than helping her. And that really bothers me because your mental health, I have to deal with it too. So I feel like you should mm. do things to make yourself feel better and not focus on the negative. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He gets mad very, very fast. He has a very short temper. Mm. And sometimes he, lots of times, he takes me wrong. Mm. And he thinks, maybe it's the things that I say and how I say them because I'm older. I don't know that I'm set in my ways. He hasn't lived as long and went through as much stuff as I've been through. So, and I was abused. Yeah in my other relationships, physically, mentally, everything. So, and he's not, so, but it kind of, it bugs me because if you were physically or mentally abused, no matter what, if somebody yelled at you, like, I kind of like want to shrink up and like get like, you know, cover my face and, you know, it makes me feel less. And so what are you, what are you both doing about this right now? We work on it every day. Yeah. This is something, like marriage isn't easy, so you know, you have to work on it every day. You have to get better at it. Like I say, we just, it got better from the beginning, because in the beginning, we, she would, well, when we were in a relationship phase, she would leave. She would just leave the house and go to her house. Now we live together, it's a different thing. Like we just, eventually, we, we either just it. not talk to each other for like 15 minutes, just be quiet. Mm -hmm. And because you cannot, an angry person cannot hear what another angry person is saying, especially when y'all got different views and values of the situation, how it occurs. So we just learned to, cool down, then talk about what offended you in this way and why did it offend you that way. Trey, what is the vice or bad habit? Careful. <laughs> Careful. Relax. <laughs> um, no, this is gonna sound super sappy, but Jeff is the most masculine, handsome, sexy man I've ever had sex with, been with, want to marry, um, and he has the worst habit of demeaning himself mm -hmm. every single day. Oh, yeah. And to me, it's like, I don't want him to feel as though he's not good enough. I just wish he would stop looking at himself and being like, oh, I have this problem or that problem because I think he's the sexiest man ever. I love him. And I worry that it's gonna become a worse thing as he gets older. And like he said before, like when I'm 40 and when he's 80 or whatever, what will he think of himself? Because I still wanna be with him when I'm 40 and he's 80. I don't care. I just wish he would look at himself the way I look at him every day in the mirror. I sometimes feel like an outsider around my partner's friends. Make your split decision in three, two, one. I'm like half I mean, I don't, I don't. Go ahead and turn around. Oh. Wow. Okay, <laughs> so John, you feel like an outsider around? He makes a lot of references to his <laughs> childhood, you know, favorite, you know, singers, songwriters, movies, things like that. He practically knows the entire Grease soundtrack by heart, which is something that I don't. And so when you're, you know, chatting with your friends and throwing out all these references, it's just completely over my head. Mm. And I feel like I'm not part of that conversation. And I know that you do try and work me in at some point. Sometimes it just feels like I'm alone and, hi, I'm over here, you know. Olivia Newton-John is a goddess and you need to get Goddess. <laughs> How many days did you cry when she died? Oh my God. I'm still crying. I, yeah, I yeah. can't even. I have an <laughs> autographed picture over my desk <laughs> to Brian. Yeah. And it's the grease cover from the You'll have no track. idea. No, she was yeah. everybody's, See, she was everybody's girlfriend. Yeah. I'm talking about. She saved us. Brian, did you know that he felt this way? Yeah, sometimes, but he's the worst in pop culture anyway, so it doesn't matter. So if I'm talking about a movie that's happening now, it's like, boom, 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 like that. So, you know, but yes, but 
sometimes I get on that role because that's kind of the one thing we can't talk about. I feel and he'll like, be like all excited. Yeah. So. When I'm with people my age, I try and make sure that you're involved in the conversation more so than when we're with your friends mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. your yeah, Usually that's when I go to the like kitchen and cook or stuff. get drinks for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you don't feel like, you feel like he could try harder in like including you in the conversation? I guess, I guess so, but also I know that you have your own things and space and that I need to give that to you. And I can't possibly learn 60 years of pop culture <laughs> like that, <laughs> so. Hmm. Trey. His best friend is an older white guy and we live with him. And whenever I go to any restaurant, you know, it's one black guy with two older white guys, so mm -hmm. already weird. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm thinking specifically about tonight. We're going to a Halloween party that is just his and his best friends, all their friends. So it's just going to be a black dot on an old white canvas. Mm. And, you know, I don't mind it. But of course, like the question was, you know, do you feel out of place or do you feel like the outlier? I'm kind of am. I'm the 22 black kid in a room full of like 50. Decrepit old white people. Yeah, talking about pets. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my God, how fun. Yeah. We met um, at Occidental College. I, he was an undergraduate, I was not. And it was primarily a hookup. And we did that for a couple of weeks until we decided we want to make this a real thing. My family approves of my partner. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. All right, go ahead and turn around. Okay, <laughs> Back on. we got a lot of yes. But you know my Cheryl, family your family doesn't. No, it's just funny you're the only one over there. <laughs> well, my family doesn't approve of him. Uh -huh. And I don't care if they do or not. Like, I'm with him. Like, it doesn't make a difference. I don't, I have seven children. One child is there for both of us. Only one is, approves mm -hmm. of the relationship. Yes. Because of. They call him the N-word. Your other your ones? Kids your, your other kids yeah. call him the end. For no reason. I'm happy. I've showed them this. They don't care. They don't care about my happiness, apparently. I don't talk to seven of, uh, six of, six of my children. Because of your relationship? Yeah. And it hurts me, but I love him. I love them too, but I love them from a distance. I'm not going to give up somebody that I've searched for all my life that I found peace and everything else and happiness. It makes me want to cry. Right. When my kids go, I done did everything for them. Cannot do no more. Why can they not approve? It hurts me daily. How does that impact you? It makes me emotional. <laughs> like really, like, yeah. I ain't never felt love like that before. Like from the time I met her, she literally quit her job because they were racist and they said they didn't want an uh, N-word dancing in the store. And she quit her job, just met her. I ain't been on her like, not but like a week or so. That was just pretty awesome. The fact that her own kids, they have caught me the N-word and stuff, it hurts, because it's like, wow, like I do love her, but she's been abused. She's been married twice before me. The marriages were horrible. They beat her, they essayed her, took whenever they wanted. Me, I'm so passionate, it's when you want to. If you're not in the mood, I'm not in the mood. It's just, it's just stuff like that, and it's just like, yo, for her to tell her own kids, it's me, I'm choosing my happiness over y'all, because they're all are grown, and it's, it's just the color and the age. The age really don't have an effect, because, mm. yeah, they're older than me, all of them are, but not her by my age, they're older with than you. An old, I've been with the younger guy before him. He was 27 years younger. And this was a while back, but they approved him. They did. He was white. So, and it's not about the age that they're upset about. It's race. I just, yeah. Wow. My family accepts Cheryl, though, wholeheartedly. She comes to the cookout, barbecues. Yeah. And they treat her like normal. Yeah. They do. We dance together to all the time. barbecues. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, yeah, that does make me feel something. Cause I know you want your kids to be there as a parent, but mm -hmm. we just can't get them on the same track as us. It hurts me that I had to turn my back on him, but I have my husband now. My life has been hell raising them, a single mom, and now my life is happy. Mm -hmm. So do you think that I'm on to jeopardize my happiness to be friends or to be, have my children back in my life? No. So you don't talk to them, you say you don't talk to them, you don't see them ever, nothing like that? Just one. Just only one. And the way they hurt her the most, because Cheryl's all for family, 
They didn't just stop talking to her, they would move her grandkids from her. It kills me yeah. that I can't see my grandkids. And I really don't want to talk about it, but yes. Oh, sweet. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> can't see that. <laughs> it's like, uh, like yeah. oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get some more tissue? <laughs> I won't take it all off. <laughs> Cheryl was working at a gas station, and um, I came in one day, and she was crying. And I was like, why are you crying, lady? She was like, I download TikTok, and they were so rude. So I was like, hey, forget them people. Keep doing your thing. You did amazing. And our friendship, got closer and grew and grew, and then we end up getting a relationship and married and happy. I often feel like no one understands our relationship. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. <laughs> I was like, I do feel yes, but then again, I was like, I don't know, because I was like, we do get judged a lot for the age gap. Especially a lot of older women, they judge Cheryl because they were like, oh, she's happy. She's getting that, you know, young, whatever, but. Yeah, they said I was dead. They put a whole thing and said I died on there, and that was, yeah. Yeah. They, they. They claimed I'm dead. Yeah, on the whole internet. news article. I had to come on there and say, no, I'm still alive. Like, because they were angry about Yes. The age gap? Yes. That hurts me to hear that as someone else who is a content creator and puts out videos on YouTube. People didn't understand us, and I think putting our lives out there, people understand us more. Right. When I first came out to my mom, I said, hey mom, I'm gay, and I'm dating someone older than you. It wasn't me. That was, <laughs> it was with <laughs> my, <laughs> it was, it was my ex, and my mom called him a pedophile. My mom didn't at all understand. Everything that I owned was thrown onto the front lawn of my ex's yard. And it took two years for my mom to really come around and understand things. And now I think being open and honest and just comfortable in my own skin, it, it has allowed others to see, I love this man and he yeah. loves me. And, and when people see that, they, they see the passion for each other. I think their, you know, their worries kind of melt away. We'll get the comments that it's like, you know, gold digger, like for him, yeah. or just like pedophile or whatever. Yeah. And, but for the majority, it's like, it's the like-minded people that give us the positive. But in person, you'll, you're never gonna get that because I always feel people on the internet are a lot bolder. People think that we're father and son. Yeah. You got, you look just like your father. And then I'll just lip lock him right in front of them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. yeah go yeah. for a kiss right there. <laughs> no. yeah. Are there any other stereotypes that you come across? Grandma and grandpa, I mean grandma and grandson. Yeah. Grandma and grandson? Yeah. Daddy issues. Daddy, yeah. Daddy issues. Yes, mommy issues, they say about yeah. him. I got her from a retirement home. He's saying, using me. Yeah, they do. They, they say that. My it's money, like, which I don't have. Right, that's the weird together. thing. With age gap relationships, they always seem it has to be money. I guess because the way Hollywood with the you know Playboy Bunny house and all that stuff have to fall into it. But you don't. If you genuinely love someone, money has no factors in the relationship. Yeah. I feel like we get more of like. It was just a green card marriage. Mm. That's the assumption. Yeah. They see that it, it was just for the green card and all that without knowing the three year immigration process that we went through. I lived in Ecuador with him during that time. Like I wouldn't do that just to give him right. a green yeah. card. You know? I think we get more, maybe more stares or like people looking at us um, for that reason than age. When people know the, the difference, uh, some of them call me a uh, baby thief. <laughs> a baby thief? A baby oh, thief. Cradle cradle a cradle, cradle robber. robber. Cradle robber. Cradle robber. Cradle robber. Cradle robber. Uh, yeah. That's what they cradle say. Robber. 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 Uh, cradle. In Spanish, yeah. I thought in Spanish. So I, I was <laughs> yeah. looking for a baby thief. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Google yeah, Translate. Cradle robber. That's cradle robber. Robber. That, yeah. cradle robber. Cradle robber. So. Yeah. <laughs> so we met back in 2018 when I was studying abroad in Ecuador. I was in a relationship at the time, so I wasn't pursuing anything, but I kind of hung out as friends. He showed me around Ecuador and I knew it was time to get out of that previous relationship, and we started dating. There's something only my partner understands about me. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. All right, go ahead and turn around. Karan, you wanna start us off? 
So once we started making TikToks, me and Cheryl, we um, had a moment where we went to the park. This was like our first date. And so when we went there, me and Cheryl went to the park. We talked about basically a lot of things that happened in our past. We both got sexually assaulted. We've been in domestic violence relationships. We, we both been, of you. Both of yes. us. Yes. And so that's where we really connected. We cried. We, we talked about the pain it caused, whatever. And that's where we connected. That was our anchor, our, yeah. our friendship that moved into a relationship. And that same day I confessed and told her I had feelings for her. And she was like, friends don't always um, say friends, you know, when they cross that line. But that's where we really anchored our yep. love at off the abuse we both went through. Mm. Yeah, that's how we actually bonded. It brought us so much closer together because we felt each other's pain. Like, it's not too often that you feel somebody else's pain by being with them, but we did. And I helped him, which I'm hoping, get rid of some of the pain like I did to, like, the things that I did to overcome it, like the molestation and the abuse and stuff, like I explained to him how to try to get let some of it go by writing a letter and, and burn it. And sometimes it helps because we've been through so much, um, how would you say it, sensitive things that a lot of people have not gone through. And, and it really made us bond like big time. Well, I think when ours started, it was it was great, and then he decided to go to PA school, and but it wasn't around Providence. It was going to be in Pennsylvania, so that meant a two years away. And it's it's tough when you well, were in the relationship a year, maybe more. Before PA school, yeah. And so for me, it was kind of devastating that I was going to have to be alone. But it, it was a lot. And then when you look back, you're like, oh, it really wasn't that bad. But mm -hmm. like in the moment, you're like, this really sucks. Mm -hmm. The distance actually maybe helped us in a well, certain way. Well, we because became very I, creative. We, <laughs> <laughs> when we saw each other. Yes, we saw each other a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the way Brian and I met was I was moving up to Providence, Rhode Island and he had an apartment that he was renting out. I got out to the car after the walkthrough and I told my mom, oh my gosh, he is so hot. If you weren't here right now, <laughs> I would have got my knees and done something So then, like a year later, this guy comes up to me at the gym and he's like, hey, I think we know each other. It's like, you showed me your apartment. And I was like, oh my gosh. And one thing kind of led to another. He's like, hey, you, you know, you want to work out together? So then we just started working out together at the gym and it kind of developed into something kind of cool. Much, much more. Yeah. I want to start a family with my partner someday. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. Okay, almost all of us say yes. That's a shocker. But John, you say no. You want to speak on that? I want to start a family with you. I don't think it's fair to our children to put them through the loss of a father at such a young age, which is something that I went through and I don't, I guess that's my own lived experience, biasing this. Um, that would, that's a lot to go through. So I just, as much as I know that you'd be an awesome father, I just don't think it's fair to the kids. Yeah. And I, I get that and it's almost more, because like I want to do it for you type thing, you know? And I know it's, 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 uh, it would kind of be unfair, but like my mom's 98, not that a 20 year old wants to have a 98 year old dad or something, but you know, I don't know. I, I've constantly think about it because I think we would be great parents. We totally would. And I know we would make it work, but it's. <sighs> I, I understand not wanting to put your kids through that loss. Like imagine like going through college and you know, you have a definite family but at the flip side, wouldn't it be unfair to not give your kids the best father? You say like he's already going yes. to be an amazing father. Yes. And yes. To, I mean, it's like having a pet. You worship those years that you had with it rather than thinking about, oh, the downsides of going without it. Yes. At least give your kids like the chance to have 18 years with the best father that you can provide them. Cool. Yes. Maybe we start with a dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are, you, right. are you a hard no? Could you be convinced? I could Definitely. totally be convinced. I think if, if you're all in, I'm all in. But I just, 
again, my bias, my lived experience is that it's a lot to go through the loss of a loved one, of a parent like that. And yeah, because you lost your dad young, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel really grateful because being the younger female in the relationship, being the one that would bear the children, I have never felt any pressure from him. And I think that's something that I was worried about, you know, getting into something like this. Or if anything, he's like, no, not yet. <laughs> like, we're not ready. I'm, I'm a little worried about uh, my age because I went to play soccer, I went to play baseball, I went to play basketball with my, with my child. Or, sure. so I'm turning old every day, so uh, I'm, I'm thinking in that. So. And I think that's why in this relationship, in an age gap relationship, you have to cherish every day. Yeah. Yeah. And that's also, it makes it magical because you know there is somewhat of an expiration date on it. And while I don't think it would be fair to the children, yeah, it's also unfair to us. I think we would be awesome dads, are you kidding me? It's, it's, it's something that I grapple with daily and I'm glad to hear that you would do it for me and with me. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I've seen you with the nieces and nephews and you are a kick ass human. Mm -hmm. and, uh. So does our time here together change your answer? <gasps> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so, and how does it feel right now that it's it's now cool. Now it's like now, you know, maybe yeah. we're open, those gates have opened a little yeah. more and yeah. you know, I can work my way in. It doesn't have to be like an infant. We can adopt. We can adopt a lot of different things. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Trey, Jeff, how does it impact you both knowing that your future is, you know, cut short by the age gap? That's something we have talked about, we have focused on. I mean, just the other day, we were, I Yesterday. asked them, can you write down baby names for me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it's the fact Which that Which made I don't me want to sob, actually. Yeah. No. I want to have a family regardless, and I want to have it with him, but I don't want his memory to be lost on my children, because he's been the most impactful person in my whole life. Yeah. And just then, he was like, I promise you, we're going to have kids together. Mm -hmm. And so, Everything, like you asked me about if time is fleeting, you know, how do I grapple it? I don't grapple with it anymore because, and it might be in two years, three years, four years, we're gonna have a little baby boy that can say Papa Trey and Papa Jeff. Mm -hmm. I wanna thank you all so much for sharing your insights with the world because I really think you're gonna make a huge difference for all of our viewers and everyone out there. Sadly, we've reached the end of this episode. Join us next time as best friends share their deepest secrets and stories. I love you. I love you. The best thing in the world, and the only thing that matters. Love you. Love you too. Brian, I love you. I love you more. I love you most. Mm.